I think the best ideas for business are the ones that involve people. Better things for people, better opportunities for people, better ways to connect people. It's about people. Revenue will take care of itself in the very best ideas. It's not always easy, but when you've got a name like Bus Stop Mamas, you know it's going to be an interesting ride, and we're about to talk about it next. Mary Kay Zinowitz, next. This is a Dash of Grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things. Now, podcasting from Spire to leaders in local communities like yours, here is Brian Leflock. And let's get cooking. Folks, one of the fun things about my job is finding guests. And I know how to do it, and I've done it many times, and I think I have a good handle on doing it. But sometimes... Man, I meet the coolest people just by paying attention to what's going on in the world. And and I'm so excited to introduce to you the founder and the uh, CEO of Bus Stop Mamas. It's Mary Kay Zinowitz. Mary Kay, before we say anything else, thank you for being on the show. I'm so excited to have you here on A Dash of Grit. Well, gosh, thank you. I'm super excited to sit with you here. Bus Stop Mamas. Now, when, when I found you, I found you on LinkedIn because we're connected to some other people and that's the beauty of LinkedIn. We don't know each other until we do. Mm-hmm. And I just knew here is a, uh, a female business owner who owns a company that's fairly new called Bus Stop Mamas in the middle of a, of a, of a pandemic and is doing amazing things. And I said, I want to meet this person. And so we got connected and, uh, and now we're here to tell your story. Tell our listeners and our viewers what the heck is Bus Stop Mamas? Uh, well, thanks. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, so Bus Stop Mamas is a workforce marketplace. Uh, so we're part tech company, part marketplace. And what we do is we provide businesses access to off the market talent who happen to be mostly moms. Okay. Many moms who left their careers to stay at home with their children and care for them who want to get back to work in some capacity. So moms uh, with, uh, we call them, our segments are car seat, bus seat, driver's seat, and beyond, uh, signifying uh, who, how our, as our children mature rather, uh, mom's time fluctuates with that. Yeah. And, and you, you founded this, I think you, you shared the story with me a little bit. You were, you were kind of a bus stop mama yourself a little bit, right? And, and you were out there and you saw this need. Tell me a little bit about the, 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 the idea behind starting the company. Sure. So uh, for us, actually, for our family, my husband was the stay at home parent for the first 10 years of our daughter's life. So flip flop from many families, but um, more and more uh, dads are staying home. Uh, so my husband stayed home for the first 10 years of our daughter's life. And he, like many people who stay at home, was starting to feel kind of sad. And he wanted to contribute to our household income. He wanted to be around adults. He wanted to exercise his other talents. Uh, so he went back to work. And then I got to stand at the bus stop for the very first time with my daughter when she was 10. Mm. And then I got to meet all these other moms, all these moms who left very promising careers to care for their families. And they too felt this kind of lull. And I thought, oh my gosh, I I know businesses need you yes. and you're so Terrible. talented. And uh, I knew that these moms oftentimes tried to get jobs and got shut out, weren't able to get through you know, the computer systems that keep them out gaps in their resume, not having the, uh, you know, most relevant terms uh, of the time, Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever it is, they couldn't get through. And I thought if only businesses could meet these people, they'd hire them because they're awesome and, uh, and they need them. So I went on a journey to figure out how to correct that. And, And so most people, everybody's had an idea. Everybody's had that big idea. Boy, I bet this ought to work. And I know you had the idea a little bit earlier, but boy, I, I, I'm going to, this would be, and then they don't do anything about it. We've all had that big idea. You had the big idea and you jumped in first, feet first. We're going to talk a little bit about the hurdles that you've overcome, but the fact that you jumped in a little over two years ago, tell me a little bit about the success of Bus Stop Mamas. Inspire people out there that are sitting there with that next big idea because you've grown this pretty quickly. Yeah, so um, it 
seems a little quicker than it actually was, but uh, the idea- It came, always does. Yes, it yeah. always does. <laughs> uh, the idea came in 2015. Lily, who was 10 at the time, is now 15. In fact, this is her last week of ninth grade. Mm. So time has progressed. And um, during that time, I did- research and uh, because I don't know the workforce space. And I discovered after listening to economists and demographers at plenty of conferences that I attended that uh, there was this dire need. Uh, there weren't, there wasn't enough supply to fill the jobs. Yeah. And I thought, I fixed it. I have an idea. And I presented it to some really smart business people back in 2015. And they said to me, you know what, we've got plenty of people, plenty of people in the pipeline, uh, don't really need your big idea. So I tabled it. And uh, I kept watching the market. And my job at the time is I was a consultant for law firms around the country. So I did a lot of travel. I was working a lot, uh, okay. kept watching the market. And I turned to Lily, December of 2018, she was 12. And I said, Lily, the time is now. The market caught up to the, the businesses. They need her. We had a 7.3 million unfilled jobs in our country, only 6 million people looking for work. And uh, I knew it was time. The Me Too movement was in full swing. And I said, Lily, I got to do bus stop mamas. And she said, Mama, what do you need to do it? And I said, I need a website. And yep. I don't want to pay anybody to do it. Nope. And she said, I can do it, Mama. So <laughs> a few hours later, Bus Stop Mamas was alive and kicking. And we went um, live January of 2019. And it has been a wild, crazy journey. Ever and since. you're based in Minneapolis. You started in Minneapolis, but you're yeah. you're growing nationally. You're able to serve many. I know that you're you're trying to grow in Buffalo, and, and you mentioned Savannah right here in Ohio, where this show comes from. You're trying to generate. Uh, tell me about that because that's successful growth in just a little bit of time. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, we've been hustling. You know, it's, it takes that, uh, doesn't it? Yeah. I thought it was super easy. Everybody thinks owning your own business is simple. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, COVID, you know, um, so our journey was that, you know, 2019 was pretty good. We were winning a lot, getting a lot of attention, winning lots of contests in the startup space. So yeah. as a result, getting a lot of media attention and that served us really well. Uh, and then uh, 2020, we were off to a great start. January, February, we're killing it. And then March happened and uh, we just had to stop. And here yeah. in Minnesota, uh, we got, you know, we all got the pandemic, but then here we also had social un unrest yes. right in our face, right in our backyard. And uh, we, me and my colleague, Jody Fulmer, we felt all that we were going through all the same experiences as our moms in our network. And we're like, what do we do with during this time? And uh, we focused on growing our network and I focused on growing business, like just telling everybody I could about bus stop mamas. That's all I did during 2020. If, uh, it's not even hard to say 2020 because I barely remember it, but it. it was business development for me, telling everybody, talking to everybody I knew, sharing it, sharing it, sharing it, using that time to grow while allowing the moms to have that time they needed because our demographic got hit the hardest, meaning moms got hit the hardest by COVID. Uh, part of survivors, I should say. Um, but we were cooking, cleaning, sanitizing, masking, teaching, uh, grocery shopping and feeding. And uh, I love to say this, my daughter doesn't love it. But, you know, I never knew she ate so much until March of 2020. I'm like, Oh, my home. gosh, you're, yeah. you're a little girl. You eat like a linebacker. <laughs> I was constantly cooking and feeding for her. Uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but our kids eat a lot. And I have one kid. So imagine <laughs> if I had, you know, more like so many families. Which a lot I of your mamas, mamas do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my colleague, she has two little ones. And uh, the moms with kids in bus seats, they were really hurting. Uh, moms with older kids, not so much depending on how their kids operate. But um it was it was a hard time in 2020. So we just kept pushing, kept pushing. Uh, second part of June of 2020, moms started feeling like they could um, start taking jobs. So we felt 
uh, the sentiment started to change. Mom started to feel like they could do this, um, figuring out what they were available for. It's still, you know, unknown, Mm -hmm. but uh, we just kept growing from there. So uh, 2021, that's the year we're in now. (laughs) I have to keep checking. Last I checked, yeah. It's 2021 (laughs) and it is June and uh, we are, you know, halfway through and uh, it's a great year. So we have uh, tripled revenue since year one. Tripled revenue since year one. Okay. So let's reset this. Sounds great, but you know, it's all relative. Well, uh, right. (laughs) Triple of one is three, which isn't (laughs) enough. Yeah. But, but no, you're, you're doing very well. And that's kind of what I wanted to get to. So even for the most established business, uh, March of 2020 was eye opening, scary, terrifying. And, And, and for many, it was end of the road. Um, and yet here you are as a new established business, just trying to get rolling and this happens. And of course the workforce stops and and everything. What part of you saw opportunity? What part of you just stubbornly kept going and what part of you said, okay, maybe this wasn't the right time. False start. Let's fall back. Can you talk about all, I'm sure all three of those had to be part of your, your psyche. Maybe I only felt the burn of, I'm making this work okay. because um, for us, what COVID did was illustrate what I was saying in 2019 at a greater degree. So in 2019, I would show up and present Bus Stop Mamas and share a data point of 43% of women exit their career after their first child is born. And a lot of people didn't believe that. Uh, A lot of women didn't believe Mm. that. They they thought, um, you know, we're equal in our family. And uh, we share everything. And uh, the responsibilities of caregiving, you know, we are pretty 50-50. We're a modern family, 50-50. You know, my family is a pretty modern family. My husband was stay at home. Right. Uh, the truth is, is the workforce not care- so much. Moms do more caregiving. Yep. Yep. And, um, yep. and we exit first. So with COVID, that is no, you know, I don't have to prove it anymore, right? In September alone, 865,000 women exited the workforce. Mm-hmm. Uh, through 2020, now these numbers are all over the place. The lowest is 20, uh, 2.1 million. The highest I've read in the New York Times was 5.1 million women exited the workforce in 2020. I knew that, I always knew, family matters. There is a solution. There's a better way than what we have to offer. Uh, We are given, we being women, are given plan A, stay at home, plan B, go to work. And we we believe that these are our options. Bus Stop Mamas is is plan C, Yeah, Uh, your way, mom. Uh, Because we know that we're all different. Our values are all different. Our support systems are all different. But the common thread that binds us all is that we want the very best for our children and how we get there is different for all of us. So Bus Stop Mamas allows that. We correct a marketplace without preaching. So we know businesses need the talent. Mm. We know talent wants to work. And there's a real great way to put them together on terms that really make the world a better place. But nobody likes to be told what to do. I don't like to be told what to do. In fact, when I am told what to do, or I'm told, and this is more to your question, if I'm told something doesn't work, I'm going to prove that it does. Yeah. Uh, and bus stop mamas, I am proving, proving, proving that not only does it work, our country needs it because yeah. we have uh, a shortage of women in the workforce and we have a high number of women, more than men graduating from college. And uh, we need that intelligence and we need family. We need support for family, for our kids, however they need it. The, the workforce shortage is, is everywhere. And it's, and it, it, it covers all, both all sexes of, of we just need workers uh, yeah. to come back and do. I'm wondering for you, what, what's been the hardest, 
What's been the hardest thing to overcome in building new business? To do they have a feeling of this can't work, this isn't for me? Like, what What's been the hardest hurdle for you to explain your concept to business owners and having them to climb on board? That ha- that is the easiest sell. So oh. businesses are easy. Uh, ah. It is uh, businesses are easy because their need is so strong. They get it. They they they're thrilled that you're there doing it. Is that it's that simple? Yep. And we all know, you know, everybody knows that they know who she is, right? Mm -hmm. They all know who she is. It's either Mm -hmm. our spouse, it's our sister, it's our neighbor. We know who mom is Mm -hmm. and we know we've all seen her do it. That's the good worker, right? Yeah. They mm -hmm. can accomplish miracles. Yeah. Right. And she left, she took care of the kids. She's feeling irrelevant. She wants to do something. She went to college. Many of the moms in our have upper level degrees and everything goes on hold. Her debt, her college debt is hard to pay back. And, you know, we have a whole bunch of people who are selecting to not have children now because of that. Hmm. So bus stop mamas, when I talk to students at the University of Minnesota, Young people, men and women, come up to me and say, you're giving me hope that someday I can have a family. We are supplying an ecosystem mm-hmm. at Bus Stop Mamas. Of We're fixing what's broken. People want to have families. Young people are in a situation right now where they have to make a choice. And by the time they feel like they're ready, it's too late. And that creates a lot of sadness. That's one part of what we do. But we're putting everybody back in on how they want to work. I hear every day moms make the best employees. Moms are the hardest workers. You know, we all know how much mom can get done. We know mom can get done. In fact, the way I got connected to my first investor was exactly that. So I worked with law firms. I know a lot of lawyers. Uh, Good There's a lot of good lawyers out there. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. I can attest to that. Um, So one of my friends was meeting with a client of hers. And the first thing he said when he sat down was, moms make the best employees. This is a CEO of a global company. And she said, you have to meet my friend, Mary Kay. And that's, and he said, I want to meet her right away. So businesses know she's a hard worker. Businesses know that she left in huge force last year. Mm-hmm. They need her back. Yep. They need diverse thinkers. Businesses know their bottom line return goes up when they have different types of thinkers and contributors to their organization. Mm-hmm. Bus Stop Mamas is a way for businesses to access her. We're different than Indeed or LinkedIn because we focus on mom. We have mom. We all know how hard mom works, not to mention her service of having people. Yeah. And uh, it's a big one. And and so what what is the hurdle? You were I think you I was thinking it was getting businesses on board, but it sounds like it's something else. Is it is it getting enough moms to fill the need? What what's the major issue that you have to overcome? My major issue is a lot of the stuff that goes on in especially women's heads about equality hmm. and. Uh, And gender is a big topic uh, today. Anyone who has kids probably is aware of that. Um, Early on with Bus Stop Mamas, I was, uh, a couple people said to me, you know, you can't talk about having babies. Um, It's not just women having babies. And um, I get, I get, I understand a lot of issues. Bus Stop Mamas is about raising her up. Uh, We focus on mom for a reason, because there is mom bias. And we are lifting mama, and we believe in mom. And that is a real hard thing to talk about. Motherhood is a very sensitive topic, more sensitive than I ever could have imagined. Um, Yeah, it's... um, we need to build our mama network. I mean, our moms get it, you know, moms get it. And we have a lot of moms who are just on board, but um, 
Yeah, it's more of getting the message out and um, getting more moms in our network and collaborating together. Is there ever a, a time when you're not able to fill the need and you're missing opportunity? Is that holding back growth a little bit as far as being able to fill the needs that the businesses have? Um, maybe a little bit with tech uh, jobs. Okay. You know, we could and and we have uh, plans in place as we expand our software that we would um, have different you know upskilling opportunities and stuff for for moms and collaborating with different, having partnerships with different entities yeah. that would supply that for, for moms. Mm -hmm. um, but really it's, we can't run fast enough and uh, there's two of us. So we have to grow. So right now I'm in fundraising mode mm -hmm. and uh, just starting that. So I'm shifting from mentality of business development, which you know very well, and you're mm -hmm. great at. Uh, it's a big shift from business development now it's okay. Now pitch, 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 bus stop hours yeah. and uh, get confident, be able to answer all of those questions about our finances, about our predictive growth, uh, make those forecasts, understand what we need to support the money we're asking for. Uh, investors changed from 2019 to today. Uh, they, they want more information. So, um, so yeah, getting getting to be really um, good at my pitches to investors is what I'm working on right now. Yeah. I'm I'm curious. I've I've met a lot of people, and your passion for what you do is it just oozes. And and I know that you're doing this for the right reasons, for the right people that you want to help. And so that's you've got that going for you. And I'm wondering, um, what was the closest you came in the history of Bus Stop Mamas? to not being where you are now? What what if A would have been B and that would have led to a wall and this would have, like, what did it ever start to go south and just frightened you to death that your dream of helping these people wouldn't come true? Yes. So, and that was very early on. And okay. um, um, one of my biggest motivators in a, uh, is my mom. Hmm. And... Um, and continues to be my mom. Uh, in the in July of 2019, so we launched in January of 2019. July of 2019, my mom passed away unexpectedly, had a massive heart attack, and died instantly. I'm sorry. And I'm thank you. I'm 800 miles away. This crushed me. It just crushed me. And my mom uh, it was. Uh, cynical teacher, you know, like you only knew you were doing something really well when she said you were doing something okay. really well. Okay. And, um, <laughs> I know that type. Okay. Yes. And my mom loved the idea of bus stop mamas. And, um, uh, my mom, uh, came from a very abusive, uh, situation early in her marriage and, um, and had three children with a very abusive man who is my biological father. She eventually married my stepdad, who's uh, uh, raised us and had uh, another child with my mom. But um, she had a rough life and she had three kids and she stuck it out uh, a very physically abusive situation because she didn't have anywhere to go. And uh, she had parents who loved her, of course, and she did have a place to go, but didn't have a job. Didn't we lived in the projects? It's not like she was leaving a lot by leaving, but she didn't leave, and mm. um, so that's a driving force for me, always, always, always. I think I want. She didn't leave because she couldn't leave, or didn't leave because she chose not to leave. It's um, hard to leave. Yeah, because and that's what you're doing now is you're empowering people, and so it, it was like I just she just couldn't because she didn't have that support. Yeah, she okay. didn't have a job. Yep. She didn't have, uh, she didn't have anything that mm. she felt that she could leave. Um, eventually my grandparents took her away, but, um, otherwise she wouldn't have left and she probably would have not lived very long. Um, but anyways, uh, fast forward. Um, I, I 
learned from watching my mom. My mom, when she said something was good, I knew it was good. So in the beginning of Bus Stop Mamas, when I had the idea, she said, I like that idea. And I kept pushing. So Hmm. July of 2019, my mom passes away. I'm crushed. And I thought I'm going to, there's no way I can do this anymore. We had a big event at the University of Minnesota. And um, I thought I couldn't do it. And my colleague, uh, Jody, who we had only been working together since April. So just a couple months. um, She said, I got this. She contacted the moms and Jody's in Nashville. I'm in Minneapolis. She contacted the moms who we had set up to be at the meeting, the mom or at the event, the moms all showed up. A mom stood in my place. I am so replaceable, which is so awesome. Moms get this quickly. Mm -hmm. So moms understand what we're doing. No one had to be coached. Nobody had to be prepped. They just showed up. Uh, They did their job. So uh, the university hired Bus Stop Mamas to help with an event. We do something called Fast Cash Gigs. Anyways, they hired them for that. And then we had a mom stand in for my booth where I would have been talking about West Stop Mamas to people who came by. Anyways, um, it it went without me. I shut down for a week. I was in Ohio with my family, doing things, all the things that those of us have who have gone through this know, the preparations, and, um, and it was hard. And uh, I listened to, uh, you know, I shared the one of your previous uh, guests and uh, 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 Victoria. Victoria Langer, and, yes, from Global Medical Film, yes. Yeah, and gosh, you know what? How inspiring that woman is. But um, my burying myself in my work hmm. helped helps me actually helped my, you my grieving. Um, sh- I know I've set things aside, probably that are gonna explode someday but it it helps me to and I feel my mom uh encouraging me and uh uh I'm a believer and I pray and I feel pretty strongly that my mom is cheering me on and this is what I need to do I feel motherhood is this theme that's been running through my life um forever and uh bus stop mamas is like the manifestation of something I didn't even know God's poetry was playing out in me. So that's what keeps me going. I I have all these stories from awesome women who, um, you know, we all have a story and our journeys are different. And as a marketing person, you know, we try to size people up all the time. Yes, we do. And Put them in I, boxes and buckets. And- yeah, it, we have to, you know, you have yep. to make things easier. And uh, I can tell you there's not a one size fits all mama. And we're all different. We're all different. And importantly, our kids are different. And we respond to their needs. We want the very best for them. So Bus Stop Mamas is designed to allow her to get whatever it is she wants. Um, Maybe it's a little job. Maybe it's a fast cash gig. Maybe it's a couple hours a week. Maybe it's a full-time job back in the swing of things. Um, We've got it. We have employers that forgive gaps. We have employers that recognize the gifts she brings to their business. And they want to employ her because she can take off and run. She needs very little training. She knows how to problem solve. We know all the gifts mamas have. And um, I get to push it forward. And uh, I am so grateful every day. Uh, It's not easy, you know, especially when when I get punches. You know, those punches come from different directions, whether it's a rejection from um, not making it into an incubator or... Uh, rejection from an investor, uh, it it hurts, and you just gotta. And I tell Lily all the time, I'm like, I just have to brush it off and keep pushing forward. That's how we get stronger. I get stronger every rejection I learn from. Learn how to get better. Like like any mom would, right? And, and it, it, does, does that does your driving come from wanting to 
make sure, I, I feel like you've learned so much from your mom and wanted to take care of others because of what you've learned from her. Or does it come from your generation of employees and, and people that are working with you that you want to see something better for them? What, where's the drive come for you for future success? I, I know the system is broken Yeah, for moms. And I am, um, I'm a fighter for justice. And uh, what I learned from my mom is to not be afraid of thinking the opposite. My mom was very contrarian. She would say all the time, I think just the opposite. We live in a very um, interesting time where emotions are high Mm -hmm. about so many things. And uh, same think is uh, is often rewarded. And I think the opposite most of the time. And Bus Stop Mamas is doing the opposite. So you said it. You just said something I was afraid to ask you. And, and we won't spend a ton of time, but I'm interested. Does it, does, is it hurtful or helpful that Bus Stop Mamas is opposite, not contrarian, maybe even, dare I say, uh, forgive me if I say it wrong, if, if it's politically incorrect, you're serving a specific sex, you're serving a specific target type where the world right now says, you know, we're all the same. Like I, I'm, I even feel strange treading on it right now, just talking. So, but yeah. the contrarian view is actually part of the success and what you're trying to accomplish. Tell me more about that. Cause that's not easy either. Right. And that's where the, that's where motherhood is very sensitive. You know, we learned a lot of things growing up. Uh, as women, we learned somewhere that having babies makes us less. Having mm. babies makes us weaker. Having babies is our choice. And therefore, you made your bed, you sleep in it, you pay the consequences. Oh, gosh. In, instead of, thank you for doing that service of bringing a human into this world, because without you, mama, we would have no people, we would have no society. So who is the most important person? in our supply chain. Mom, You're making a pitch for mom. Yes. No mama, no people. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is a sensitive subject. And when I say it, I know that it um, creates a pause and I, um, I am okay with that. Mm -hmm. It was hard at first. I believe that moms need to be lifted up. There is a bias. I had it myself. You know, I was a working mom, career mom, after I had Lily. There's a significant difference between giving birth and not. And there are consequences. You know, your body does a pretty amazing thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least my body does, but your body doesn't. And <laughs> but my body did. And yeah, yeah. it was different for me than my husband. And the process yeah. of being a mom, it doesn't end like that. You know, there are, everybody's birthing situation is different. Everybody's recovery is different. Everybody's emotions, this unbelievable event. It's a crazy event. You just put a person into this world that taught you love like you never felt before, that changed, transformed you at Liz, for me and my husband, we fell in love with the dots. Um, and so these amazing people doing these amazing things, you're, you're putting them back to work in amazing places for amazing businesses. And, and so God bless you for, for doing that. I want to give you a chance to uh, a little bit of a commercial. Can you tell us what types, you're talking about business development, what types of businesses are you hoping to bring on board that you can serve with through Bus Stop Mamas? And how would they reach out to you? How would they find you? Um, I want to help you in any way I can. Thanks. So it's super easy to find us uh, through our website, uh, Bus Stop Mamas. Uh, Which your so daughter that created. That my daughter created. Actually, we're, we're going well to adjust as I speak. So we have a uh, new software that's being... Um, put in place like right now. So um, let me know if there's any glitches, if anybody you goes. Got it. Um, but all types of work, uh, all types of businesses. Uh, we work with uh, businesses that are filling lots of positions and we can help that. You know, uh, we do 
uh, positions for doctors, lawyers, chemists, administrative assistants, delivery people. We have PhDs, GEDs, and everything in between. We have moms that want factory work, night work, day work, off hour work. We have moms that are ready to jump in and do anything. So no matter what your business is, if you need people, give us a call. And for moms out there, please spread the word. We want every mom in our network. We, uh, it's free to join our network for moms. Businesses pay us after hire. Okay. So it is a, a good proposition. Everybody wins. There's no losers in our game. And uh, we really want to spread the words for mom, the word for mom. There's no black holes with bus stop mamas. Everybody meets the boss. Nobody gets rejected. And, and, and so bus stop mamas is, is, uh, bus stop mamas.com is where they would go to find you and, and ask questions. And folks, if, if you're wondering, I've only known Mary Kay for a, a short while. We've only talked a, a couple of times. She's the real deal. And, and I think, I think I know people well enough. You can trust Mary Kay. I think both on the mama's side and the business side. Um, so Mary Kay, I hope people will reach out to you, whether through the show or through any number of ways. I know they will, uh, God bless you. And, and, uh, and Thank congratulations you. on a job well done and a lot of grit in a tough, tough world right now. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Thanks. You know, you can call me too. I, if you want my phone number. Oh yeah. Yeah, please. Um, it's 612-396-9653. And that's my direct cell phone. Perfect. A quick, uh, a quick plug here for my company. My company, Aspire Advertising, we do uh, marketing and we do websites too. Of course, now we might be out of business now because your daughter has started her own website company. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, you're, if your business is, is uh, the kind of business that Mary Kay is looking for, which is uh, someone who's trying to grow through challenges and trying to overcome hurdles and obstacles, and, and she's there to help you, and, and so are we. So we will help with marketing and uh, uh, brand strategy and implementation and those kinds of things. So spiread.com is where we live and you can find us and talk to us in that way. Mary Kay, thank you so much. I want to ask for one more little tidbit. There are people out there that have that idea and it's brewing inside of them. They know that it was, it's a million dollar idea, but they haven't taken a step yet. What Do advice it. would you give them? Do it. Uh, I gave my idea to another uh, startup guy and on a piece of paper and he said, just start putting people together. Hmm. And that's what I did. And that's my advice to everybody. Just do it because it's the people who do. It's the people who do. Yeah. It doesn't take, I mean, it takes some thick skin, but you'll grow that <laughs> along the way. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Thank you so much for being on the show, Mary Kay. This is Dash of Grit. We do it once a week. And if you're looking for some more grit, you can hear all the past episodes or wait till next week for the next one to come out. Mary Kay, thank you so much for being our guest on the Dash of Grit. Congratulations. Well done. And, uh, and, and keep up the great work. Same to you. Thank you. Take care. Everybody stay gritty. We'll see you next time. This is a Dash of Grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things.